So many of you liked my video where I showed you how to use your GoPro as your main YouTube studio camera. In fact, it's my most popular video on my YouTube channel. So thank you everybody for watching that video, for commenting on that video, liking, sharing, and so on. Really appreciate that. And today we're going to do pretty much the same thing, but I'm going to be much more precise when it comes to GoPro settings, when it comes to the lighting, because now I have a fancier and better lighting setup. And also I'm going to adjust the GoPro angle as best as possible to get the best results possible and the best image quality possible out of my GoPro camera. Now, would I recommend getting a GoPro specifically to shoot videos like I'm shooting right now? Definitely not. I would rather get something like the Canon M50, uh, Canon SL2, Sony A6000, Sony A6100, or any other mirrorless or DSLR camera on the market because these cameras have more flexibility when it comes to settings and also they have bigger sensors. So that means they're gonna give you better low light performance, better image quality, just overall better and more flexibility when it comes to settings and camera buttons and use. But if the only camera that you have available is a GoPro, then keep watching this video. I'm gonna show you how to get the best image quality possible uh, out of your GoPro when it comes to shooting something like I'm shooting right now with my Fujifilm X-T4. So, first of all, let's start with the settings. So first of all, I'm using the GoPro Hero 7 Black. If you have the GoPro Hero 8, you're gonna have a little bit more flexibility when it comes to the settings, and also a little bit better image quality than on my GoPro Hero 7. Now let's start dialing in the correct settings for my A-Roll Studio shot. So, first of all, resolution and frames per second. I set mine to 2.7K and 24 frames per second. The reason why I set it to 2.7K is because I want to have linear field of view. On the GoPro Hero 8, you can set it to 4K and you also have the option to set it to the linear field of view but on the Hero 7 Black, it's only uh, doable with 2.7K. Then 24 frames per second, because that's usually what I'm shooting on. If you shoot 30, then put 30. If you shoot 60, then put 60. But my most preferable frame rate is 24 frames per second. Next thing is field of view. Obviously, it's gonna be linear. Like I said, to not have this fisheye look, to avoid it as much as possible, at least. And then stabilization, I'm gonna turn it completely off because anyways, the GoPro is gonna sit on a tripod. I'm not going to move it anywhere. And also I want to pair my GoPro with my iPad to monitor my shots. And by turning off the stabilization, I'm gonna have the least delay and lag possible. Protune is obviously going to be on. Shutter, very important. I'm gonna set it to one over 48 to double the frame rate uh, basically not only to have the most natural motion blur, but also to have a constant exposure. A V compensation is not available because I changed my shutter. I don't know if this option is available on the GoPro Hero 8, if we change the shutter, but if it is, do not touch it, just leave it at zero. In my personal opinion, don't need to touch it at all. Next, white balance, very, very important. If you want to get the correct colors, definitely set the white balance manually. Mine is set at 5,000 Kelvin because my main light that I'm using is 5,000 Kelvin. Now, if your light is 5,500 Kelvin, then put it to 55. If your light is 6,000 Kelvin, then put it to six, but mine is 5,000 Kelvin. The next option is ISO minimum and ISO maximum. I'm gonna set it to ISO minimum 100 and ISO maximum 100 as well, remember, the lower the ISO, the less noise, the better the image quality. In my previous video, I was only able to go down to ISO 200 because I could not really adjust the brightness of my light, but this time I have a better light and I can also adjust the brightness, so I'll be able to uh, use the ISO minimum 100 and ISO maximum 100 as well. As for the sharpness, I'm using sharpness at medium because I don't want to go too low with the sharpness, not to have any sharpness at all, and at the same time, I don't wanna to go too high to have an over-sharpened image. So my sharpness is set to medium. Then color, I chose flat, not because I want to color grade my footage, but because I want to have as neutral of a picture as possible. And then in post-production, I'm gonna add the necessary contrast, saturation, 
and, and whatever else is needed. But I'm not gonna color grade anything, just color correcting my footage to get the right exposure and so on. Raw audio is off, microphone stereo, because anyways, I'm going to use an external microphone solution. Now I'm going to pair my GoPro Hero 7 Black with my iPad, and then we're gonna set up an angle for my A-roll studio shot, basically. Okay, so I have paired my GoPro Hero 7 Black with my iPad Pro, as you can see. If I'm gonna move it, it's gonna move on the iPad screen as well. And this is so cool that I can pair my GoPro with an iPad or with a smartphone. And if you're gonna create this kind of a shot, I highly suggest to you to connect your GoPro to your smartphone or a tablet or to a computer or to an external monitor, whatever you can do to monitor your shots better. Now, because my room is pretty boring, and that's probably the main reason why I'm shooting against a blank wall, I'm gonna recreate this kind of a shot with the GoPro. I'm gonna try to make a light mode shot, and then I'm gonna try to make a dark mode shot. By light mode, I mean a lot of brightness, a lot of light on my face, a lot of light on the background to have everything uh, evenly lit. And then when I'm gonna try to make the dark mode shot, I'm gonna try to make it a little bit more contrasty. So I am going to be very well lit and the background is going to be a little bit darker to create a little bit of depth, a little bit of contrast between me and the background with the GoPro. All right, so let's start adjusting everything. First of all, I'm going to start with the lighting and I'm going to probably remove this grid on my light because I want to have as much light as possible on me and also on the background to make the light mode, basically. So let's remove the grid. Okay, so this is how the shot looks so far and I think it's a little bit overexposed. So I'm going to adjust the brightness of my light with the remote controller. Still overexposed as far as I'm seeing on my iPad. That's why it's so handy to use something like my iPad to monitor uh, the image of the GoPro. I think this is enough, something like this. Now I can see that this side of the background is a little bit dark, so I'm gonna blast some light on this side. I am going to use this light. This is the Falcon Eyes F7, but you can use pretty much any light with adjustable brightness to give you even more light in the background or wherever you want, essentially. So I'm gonna put it to 5000 Kelvin, because like I said, my light is 5000 Kelvin, and we're gonna put some light on this side to brighten up the background a little bit. So let's see, this is too bright. I think something like this should be enough, more or less. All right, so this looks much better right now, but I can see that I have a little bit of a shadow here and I want to eliminate that. So I'm going to bring in my 5-in-1 reflector to give me a little bit of fill light on this side of my face. So as you can see, the closer I bring the reflector, the more light I have on this side of my face, and I'm gonna remove it uh, just so you can't really see it on camera, and adjust it as needed. So now you can see it's dark, and if I'm going to rotate it, it's gonna give me a little bit more light on the left side of my face. This is pretty much the best image quality you could get from a GoPro camera. Everything is pretty well lit, the background and me, and I think you don't really have a lot of noise in the image. Looks pretty good as far as I can see, and it's totally usable for YouTube videos. Now let's try to create a dark mode scene, a more contrasty scene, where I am gonna be well lit and the background is going to be a little bit more dark to create a little bit more depth and more contrast in the image. So first thing that I'm going to do is add back the grid to control the light better because I don't want the light to spill on the background as much. Just gonna glue it back. 
And as you can see right now, the same amount of brightness from the light, but with the grid added, the background looks a little bit darker and moodier basically. But at the same time, my face is a, a little bit uh, underexposed. So I'm gonna have to bring in the exposure a little bit. I think something like this looks good. And also I'm going to adjust the angle of the light a little bit uh, more towards me and not towards the background to make the background even more dark. Okay, so something maybe like, let's see. Yes, yeah, something like this, but now you can see the light in the image. I'm gonna lift it up a little bit more. And now to give a little bit more mood to the scene, I'm going to change the background light from white to orange to just spice things up a little bit. If you don't have an RGB light like I have, you can simply add a gel in front of the light and then you're gonna have the option to change the color of the light basically. But luckily for me, I have an RGB light. I'm gonna put it here just to add a little bit of light on the plant in the background, a little bit of spice of interest. And I think this is, this looks pretty good all ready. And obviously, I'm going to also bring my fill light, my reflector, but I don't want the reflector to reflect in the background just on me, so I'm gonna adjust it. And this is too close. And I'm gonna move too close to the camera. Just like so. I think I can add a little bit more brightness to my face. Maybe this is it. And there you have it, the dark mode, more or less. I can see a lot of noise in here on the iPad at least, and also a lot of noise in here, but this is the limitation of the GoPro camera. That's the best quality you can get basically with a GoPro camera. In my personal opinion, it looks pretty good. It looks usable, totally actually usable. So it's not bad at all. So basically to get this kind of image quality from your GoPro, you're gonna have to invest in a good lighting source, for your key light, bring it as close as possible to you, make it as soft as possible. And also probably you're gonna have to invest in a background light if you want to make the background a little bit more interesting. And the settings that I showed you before, lower down the ISO as much as possible, lower down the shutter speed, control your white balance and so on. And this is pretty much the best quality that you can get from a GoPro camera. Let me know down below which mode you liked more, the light mode or the dark mode. And if you have any other questions or comments, also let me know down below. And I guess I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.